man, I've been saving for a while now. And if I just keep saving all this money, by the time I'm 65, I'll be able to really live my life finally. Get the hell out of here. What the hell you do that for? What you saving money for? Saving money's for losers. Have you not listened to Robert Kiyosaki? Yeah, whatever. Hurt my hand and stuff. Ray Woods, welcome to the channel, Crab About the Bucket. On this channel, I discuss different topics related to financial education, mindset, career, and business growth, so I can teach and educate you about those topics from my past mistakes so you don't make the same ones. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's going to pop up here. Smash the notification bell so you'll be notified when I come out with more quality videos. Now, as you can see, my alter ego has convinced me that saving money is for losers and i'm starting to understand why and in this video i want to explain to you why saving money is truly for losers now what i'm about to tell you is probably going to blow your mind and you're probably not going to agree with me you're probably going to look at me like i'm stupid but you got to face the facts. You can't deny the facts. Let's look at the average household, right? According to money.cnn.com, the average household, six out of 10 Americans don't even have $500 sitting in their savings account. So if something major was to happen, like, I don't know, I have to go to the emergency room and it's a couple hundred dollars or I have to get some medicine that's a couple hundred dollars, I may not even have that. Statistics showing that a lot of Americans will use their credit card to do that. Now we go deeper into debt and all that whole cycle. So let's say the average American has about $200 in their bank account, right? Let's add in all these different factors. Now, the Bureau of Labor Statistics show the inflation rate. 2019 average was 1.8%, okay? 2020, now as of January 2020, we're in February right now, but since January is already done, of this year is at 2.5%, which is the inflation. Also, you got to take into account that we have bank fees. And if you're not over a certain limit with some banks in your savings account, you're going to be paying bank fees. And most of these banks are going to charge like $5 a month for you not being at a certain amount in your savings account. And remember, six out of 10 Americans don't have enough money in their savings account to even waive that fee in their bank account. So they're going to be getting hit with some fees. Now, we're going to look at your interest rate. Now, we're going to look at that later, okay? Let's do some math real quick. Let's, let, let's, let's do some math, okay? So let's just say I got $200, right? I got my $200. Bang. I'm balling. I got $200 in my savings account and I'm ready to take over the world, right? Now, $200 in my savings account, and we're going to subtract the just inflation, okay? We're gonna make a couple different columns. We're gonna subtract just the inflation. So if I subtract 1.28% from this, that's gonna give you somewhere around, it's gonna take out like, I don't know, $5. So you'll end up at $100, uh, $195, okay? Now, let's do another column where I have another $200, and I'm going to just subtract the bank fees. Now, remember, these fees are annual, okay? Let's just use it as annual. Bank fees are monthly, but we're going to use it for, for the whole year. And the inflation, let's just assume that throughout whole 2020 is 2.5%, so 2.5% average for the whole year. We got $200 for bank fees. Now, the bank fee is going to be about $5 a month, so 12 months, that's 60 Hope I'm doing my math right. So we got $200 minus $60. That's going to leave us at $140. Just from bank fees. If you got $200 sitting in your savings account. Okay? Now, I'm not done with the math yet. We have our wonderful interest rates. Yay! No, we're not going to cheer interest rates on. Because check out interest rates. You got that same $200, and we're going to add in that 0.09% APY, or the annual percentage yield that the bank 
the savings account is going to, the, the bank is going to give you this for having money in your account. We're going to pay you interest, right? 0.09%. Now, the interest rate for that is going to turn your, your, your $200 is going to be somewhere around $200.18. You're telling me that if I put my money in a savings account and I get hit with inflation, the value of my dollar goes down by five the whole year. And then if I put my money in my savings account, I'm also going to lose $60 for the whole year because I don't have enough in my savings account. And to try to make me feel better, you're going to tell me that I can get 0.09% on the interest? Are you serious? You don't really know how I feel about that? So this is why Robert Kiyosaki says that saving is for losers. Now, I'm not saying don't save money at all. I'm not saying that. But if you're solely relying on putting your money into a savings account so it can grow, it's not going to grow. Your savings account is going to do this. If you're sitting at $200 right here, your savings account is going to do this over time. It's going straight down. Why would you want to keep your money in a savings account? Okay? There's no purpose. You're losing money. Take it out now. It's better to stick it off in your mattress. Now, I don't want to destroy all hope, okay? There is hope and there is a solution to this madness, okay? Here's what I would have done back then. Here's how it would have started. And I want you to learn here from, from what I wish I would have known back in the past. I would have saved my money. Yep, you heard me right. I would have saved my money. But I've not relied on the savings account to give me financial freedom. I would have saved my money. I would have invested in my education. I would have learned more about money, learn more about whatever I'm wanting to do as far as my career, my business, whatever it may be. And put that money into my education. Self-education is the most powerful thing that you can give yourself. Put the money and invest it in yourself. Don't go and invest it into Bitcoin. Don't go and invest it into all these other different things that you know nothing about until you have enough money to really do that and you're not speculating. You actually know what the hell it is that you're doing, okay? Then, once you got the education, now you're making some more money. Now you can really start investing. That's the plan that I would have started with if I was, if I was back at 18, 19, 17 uh, years old, about 10 years ago or so, okay? Now... Here's, here's something that can give you a better return and I would say match inflation and actually pass inflation and also can eliminate your bank fees. I'm going to show you how you can do that right now. So let's just say you got that same $200. Now, I'm going to just use this for the sake of numbers. I know you will need a lot more money to do this, but let's just say $200 does the job, okay? So I got my $200. Right. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it into real estate. OK. Now. There was some statistics, a study done and the average return on real estate, your ROI for real estate is about eight point six percent. OK, that's the average return on real estate. And let's just say that return is for the year so we can keep it even with all the other numbers that we calculated. That was a year. OK, so if you take an 8.6 return on two hundred dollars, uh, I think that it gets you somewhere around. So we add the 8.6 percent that it gets you somewhere around blah, 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 another 17 dollars or so. So two hundred seventeen dollars is what you make off that return. Eight point six percent return. My return is 8.6% and I get about $17 off of my $200. Now, it'll take you somewhere around, let's say, if you was to get four properties with the same ROI to be able to catch up and pass the inflation and the fees, okay? Now, this can be accomplished within a year. 
And there'll be more videos later on about the real estate and all that stuff. But this can be accomplished within a year. The point I'm trying to get at is the only way that I see fit to be able to beat inflation and to conquer your bank fees and eventually have enough money to where you don't even get hit with bank fees is to invest in something that's going to cash flow. Now, it doesn't have to be real estate. You got things like real estate that will give you money. If you're a stock trader, you can play with stocks. It'll give you money. Warren Buffett is one of the biggest investors. You know, he gets money off of stocks like crazy. He's got 5,000 billion trillion dollars, you know. So you can do it off of uh, businesses, you know, that, that, you know, maybe making product, excuse my drawing, whatever, you get the point. So you can make cash flow off a lot of things, but you cannot have financial freedom by putting your money in the savings account alone. You can't do that. Now, what have we learned today? Let's recap real quick. We bring it back. We learn from our mistakes. You guys learn from my mistakes. I learn from my own mistakes. We all learn from mistakes. Okay? We start, we save money. We take that money we saved until we start making a lot. Educate ourselves. Now, you don't just educate yourself at the beginning. You keep doing it. You get more money. You start making more money, and then you got enough money to where you can invest. This is at a point when you're starting to really understand this money game, and you're starting to invest and make more money. You can invest your money in real estate. That's going to give you some money. You can invest your money in businesses, in stocks, in entertainment, media. Maybe you want to be an actor or actress, or you want to get into the music industry. Whatever it may be, that can be something that can give you some money, some cash flow. I want you to say this with me in your head while you're watching this video right now. Right now, cash flow is greater than inflation. I want you to say it with me. Cash flow is greater than inflation. I want you to remember that because you got these millionaires and these billionaires out here that are not even fully affected by inflation because they make so much money, it doesn't even matter to them. It doesn't matter to them. If gallon of milk goes up from $2 to $5, it doesn't matter because they already quadrupled their money before inflation even took place. So learn the money game. Get better at the money game. This is why I make these videos so you can learn from my mistakes so you can see where I wish I would have knew this stuff a lot a long time ago, which would have put me more ahead. So I want to be able to give information to you guys so you can take the information and be able to implement it in your life and hit your financial freedom point that you want to in your life. Now that was the end of the video. If my video was able to give you some insight, if it was able to open up your mind and let you see how you're getting screwed by saving your money and relying on the savings account alone, if you was able to see that and those numbers made sense to you, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. If you have any questions, I'll just leave it in the comments below. I'll leave some resources in the description with the links. And my name is Ray Woods, channel Crab About the Bucket. And until next time in my videos, I will see you on the next video. Oh,